crazy that two years later, we are still having supply chain issues and we're still feeling the effects of in our everyday lives. We're on site, we're getting ready, we're doing construction, we're getting the site prepped and ready, and then delays. That's what we hear, right? We're not able to get to you when we thought we would. We don't have the supplies we need, we don't have the help we need. We're hearing it over and over again from our vendors. So we had to push this job quite a bit, which is not a situation that we ever wanna be in, where we leave construction. You can see pallets behind me, we've got gravel and all kinds of stuff. It's not a position we wanna be in where we're leaving stuff behind and leaving a site undone, but we really didn't have a choice in this case. So I consider this, even though we've already done some work here, I consider this day one of this job. And uh, let me show you what we're working on and how this site is all gonna come together and what it's gonna look like because this is gonna be an epic space for these wonderful people here. And this is really gonna transform the way that they live their lives. music that you have playing in the background is it makes me want to go uh, Louisiana and go catch some catfish mm. you know it's like the music they play when they're like panning into going like going noodling go everybody's going noodling, go noodling. Like, noodling. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just about to go noodling in Louisiana after watching this video <laughs> <laughs> every time I hear it, it just reminds me of like all the uh, like the the memory on driving Fords have you ever been beaten by a wet spaghetti noodle by your girlfriend well, that's how it feels to drive a Ford F-250. <laughs> anyway, down to the brass tacks. Yes. We ran into a lot of issues on this job, didn't we? We did. Almost from start to finish, actually, I think it was a, it was a struggle the entire, entire way through. Yeah, I, mean, I remember when we first started the job, he had ordered the pavilion. And then they were like, well, hold on a minute. We're not quite ready because posts aren't in the ground. And then we set the posts and then they were like, oh, just kidding. We had, I talked to the, that rep for that company a couple of times. And like you said, they're ready to, to send us the, the pavilion. And they're like, well, do you guys have the footers poured? And I think you and I, as well as the client, were under the impression that they were going to arrange to have the footers poured. They were going to handle everything. Everything. It was semi-turnkey. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we started... Got, I remember we got the brick in, we got that pavilion set, and that didn't turn out very well, did it? No, the, I mean, the construction of the pavilion was, was nice. Uh, right. they, did a, they were quick, I mean, it was very like quick. two days yeah. after we waited eight weeks eight for weeks. them to show up. Yeah, yeah. we struggled. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely struggled with that one. Um, things were a little bit off square, some of the lines were just weird. There was like areas in the, um, uh, in the yard around the pavilion that like had settled weird after we had built stuff, and it was just, yeah. it was, wasn't up to snuff. No, it was not. And for you guys watching, this is kind of the journey of our businesses. We went from having um, just one crew really doing hardscape installs. And as the company started to grow, we're experiencing growth pains, if you will, all through because what happened when everybody's sitting at home, everybody wanted stuff in their backyard. They wanted a space to go to. They wanted a place where they can hang out in their backyard. And we were very uniquely positioned going into to help a lot of people make this happen. This job, while it turned out well and the client was exceptionally happy with the results, we started this job in June and I don't think we wrapped all the little pieces up until November, it was right? Just before Thanksgiving, I think. Just before Thanksgiving, we finally wrapped this job up. You know, it obviously played a factor, but also uh, our company growing and developing and us learning how to do some of these processes and like this or processes, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but like this job was the first time where we were incorporating a, a structure like this with a, the plunge pool or the, the swim spa. Um, because before that was always something that was subbed out that we had like River Pools handle or another company handle. So this was kind of our first foray, if you will, into every aspect of this project we handled and put together. We told him like, hey, I, this isn't something we've been doing. And he gave us a lot of grace and a lot of space to experiment with him and learn and make the whole project come together. But it was interesting with the guys, like, okay, wait a second. Yep. You know, I know you guys are a newer crew, but these are not the way that lines should look and all patios right. are supposed to be level. And <laughs> yep. And this is also too for us uh, in the, the peak of our busy season. Right. And, 
the dead of the summer in Virginia. So it's it's incredibly hot. It's 100 humid. degrees. It's disgusting. And at this particular property, you there's... cut the humidity with a knife. <laughs> with a knife, yeah. Well, in this property as well, there was not a lot of shade. It's a, right. a pretty open backyard. So, I mean, the guys are, you know, getting beat by the sun all day, every day for, you know, a good couple weeks. Yeah. Um, so I definitely can uh, empathize on how that, that wears on you. But as you're kind of alluding to, we had, you know, a little bit of a, a newer crew that is obviously well-versed in, in payers, but uh, some of the things that we do are a little bit more detail. Um, the steps, I think, was probably... There was an elevation change, so that wasn't something that that crew had particularly handled, but we right. thought they were well-versed in it. The stairs coming out of the back, well, those didn't, weren't really any issues with that, but that, again, that was something a little bit newer. Pretty new, them. yep. So all that <laughs> craziness behind yep. us, what's, what's your favorite part of this project? Uh, honestly, the, the plunge pool, I think, I mean, yeah. of course it's like the focal point aside from the pavilion. Like when you come into the driveway and, you know, hook around the left, the first thing you see is a pavilion and it's got all these nice little, you know, small cap lights right. that, uh, you know, kind of border that, that raised landing portion. But as you turn us a little bit further left, there's mm -hmm. that awesome plunge pool. that's also lit up like crazy. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the cool thing about this job particularly is there are so many visual factors uh, once you enter the space as a whole. It's hard to like, it's hard to pick your, like, your favorite, favorite thing. thing. I do um, like, this kind of just happened where he wanted the granite on the top. You know, he's like, we've got this beautiful thing. Now we yeah. got to put granite on it. Yeah. And I never would have thought to put granite around a pool like that. And it's leathered, so it had like the it's texture. It's a nice, and nice finish to it's it, It's not yeah. slippery when you're in and out. When you enter the space, there's all these different visuals, you know, where the when you're walking into the space, we have the one wall that's kind of U-shaped with the water feature right in front of you. And that's almost like, hey, welcome to the space. When you pass this line, now you've entered the space. Right. And, party zone or whatever you want it to be kind of just welcomes you in almost like a doormat if you will yeah uh, that it just kind of shows you that you've entered a cool space um, and even adding the second water feature which was a complete afterthought right because yep. he didn't he didn't we were planning on building a pondless waterfall right. outside of the space angling in so when you're in the space, you're looking out. Looking but, out and you can see But all then that. as we're talking to him, and of course, you know, we're talking from June to November. So there's a lot of time. <laughs> Actually, there's a lot of time to decide what you want in that time frame. But the pondless waterfall went away. Yep. We put the three basalt columns in. Yep. And then we also put the urn. And so now when you're sitting in the pavilion, it's like stereo. Yeah. So you could hear the sound of the basalt columns and the urn like from any different, and it kind of, they have different sounds. So as you're evolving around the space, like you just close your eyes and you can know what direction you're pointing. It's kind of a cool, it is cool. like stereo experience for well, the that, space. Well, that, uh, that's, that spot particularly has a lot of just different features. I mean, he even added a, uh, an outdoor shower so you can oh, jump out right. of the pool and yep. you got an outdoor shower that's all lit up and a stuff. Too. I mean, it's, yeah, like when you see it from above, you see how everything kind of flows. flows. and you're not wasting pavers per se because the traffic flow just kind of goes through one space. Well, all that being said, what's your favorite aspect of the, of the project? I really like how water features tie a space together. I think, you know, I think that's a corny answer, but I really just love the element of yeah. water. Um, and anytime you can add that water, it adds such life. You know, a pool still, while it has moving water and elements like that, it's still a static pool of water, sure. right? It's just, it's, it's a there. pool, but water features bring life and they enhance the space in a way that, you know, just lighting something up or just putting a beautiful paver or a beautiful piece of furniture, you don't get that element. So water and fire, you know, when you can have those two elements surrounding a space, yeah. it just brings this different ambiance and ties everything together. It's the, the velvet on the ears. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it goes back to just even when I was a kid, you know, we had the stream in our backyard and we would dam it up and play yeah. in it and build like little jumping holes and stuff like that. So I, I'm a sucker for water. The basalt columns were a cool addition after the fact. It's like, cause I was kind of curious how everything was going to tie itself together after the, the pomace went away. Right. Right. And, uh, and you know, that little, half moon knee wall that's there that was existing before we like we didn't build it is it ready there right. from yeah, that brick. had it built I'm like what are we going to do with this you know i think we had we did put no i think initially because it did evolve a couple of times like initially we did another uh like a smaller wall behind it and it was just going to be like a 
a small flower bed because he had like that wrought That's iron right. bench. There wasn't going to be a water feature there. Right. And we just had it all lit up. And then uh, yeah. and a I week remember or so later. He, I was out of town and he called me. He's like, hey, let's do a waterfall right here. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, let's do like a three foot tall like piece of slate with water just falling over it. And, you know, we just talked about how much I love water features. <laughs> right. But I'm, like, in my okay. head, I'm thinking like, okay, this is going to be some man-made uh, obscenity and it's just going to have like water just like gushing out of it spraying everywhere and yep. so the basalt columns was a perfect fit they were for that absolutely space. perfect i mean i remember when i was sitting there with scott the very first day before he signs an agreement before he's even handed a, a check over to us and i think this might have been my second visit to the house or maybe and he has this sketch and it's color coded. Yes. You've seen this I've sketch. seen this sketch. Yep. On, so a, this on is, Draftsman's he did, paper. He did a lot of the design. <laughs> like he did the, how he wanted it to flow, but he didn't know what materials to use or how to like orient things exactly. And so right. he's got this and he's got it all sketched out and he's more or less just like here, make it happen. <laughs> Produce it. <Yep. laughs> Produce it. And we did. And at the end of the day, he's like, this is not at all what I expected. Right. This is, this doesn't look, this isn't, you know, maybe a couple of the lines are the same on my sketch. Sure. This isn't, this isn't even remotely what I had pictured in my head. And at the end of this, he's like, this is more than what I had even dreamed about. Absolutely. And this, is an, this is an awesome space. And then to hear of his grandkids swimming in it and enjoying it and his wife interacting with it and, you know, his, his kids even coming and, you know, just like right. the space that he wanted. Um, and the fact that he had, uh, a concept of what goes into all of that the planning the um, the planning alone takes so much time yeah. energy and effort um, all the stuff you don't see you don't see right you know yeah um you know we're so used to like you know, definitely on our facebook and our instagram stuff like it's always okay cool beginning flashy picture flashy cool fun pictures like everything is all you know kittens and rainbows and stuff but like <laughs> no one ever sees any of like the back office work or the right. pre-planning or um, any of the logistics to get everything to come together as smoothly as humanly possible. Right. And the fact that there was, you know, someone that was more than willing and understanding to kind of work through all of that, um, I think made, at least for all of us, definitely at the very end, um, made everything a lot more palatable and enjoyable once it was all said and done and to see everyone just, you know, tickled pink with, with their new space. Yeah. I do really appreciate you guys following along with this journey of this space taking so long but coming together in the most perfect way and better than we all had imagined. If you want to see more content like that, check out this video right here. Also, we are about to move spaces. We're about to pack this shop up where I'm at right now and we're about to move across town and we're really excited to show you what that journey looks like. So tune in and we're going to show you guys moving our shops, setting up our new base of operations and even a little display center that we're going to build at the new place for you guys to come and visit with us. Get outside, my friends.